both give them the same courtesy or you got to both give them the same for that particular okay you guys have anything that you want to uh, work on now that you know how we're, we're doing it uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. Yep. Oh, I lost where I was. Um, a false witness, it's, I found it, 19 I'm at. Okay, yep. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. Now you know what that leads into. And it, you know in Romans, we, we could pull that out possibly too. But that's backbiting, mm -hmm. whisperer. Are you catching on with these? You know, you you say one thing to stir up trouble with another, you know? Okay. And then you sit back and watch. How many people have you known do that? That's what that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that what that is? Yeah. And you know, the thing is, I've actually <laughs> been a part of it. You know, when you're a teenager, you do kind of hit that, like you get these little groups and you kind of find it funny to plant this little seed and then see what happens with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I can't say I, I am clean of that. I don't do it now. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> but yeah, see, that, that, that's something that we might think is innocent teenager stuff, but that has got an intent to cause mischief. Did you ever hear a miscord on a piano or a guitar? Uh, yeah. It doesn't sound too good, does it? Right. <laughs> so with discord amongst the brethren, that's what he was saying. You, you're sowing a lie, in other words. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it doesn't sound too good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Especially when you know the truth. You know how that C chord goes, but then you put another chord in it, the note in it intentionally, it's off. Okay, yeah, the, the, we basically... Um, cover that. Then they're going to start talking about lust and stuff. But uh, this whole chapter is good because, I mean, it even starts talking about, you know, comparing the aunt, you know, and... With the it, uncle. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I thought slugger was in here, but it's actually at the beginning of the trip, or sloth. They yeah. literally say sloth. It does. Isn't I don't know it? where, but it does. Do you know, like, the seven deadly sins, be, it was a movie? Slothful. It was, right. Paul says, be not slothful. Yeah, that's in the New Covenant. Right. But I thought it was a list of seven, like the seven deadly sins. No. You've seen that movie with Kevin Spacey I and think Brad so. Pitt? No. No. Oh, that's a real good. bad movie. Yeah. A bad one? Oh, I, no, well, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's good. It's, but. it's a yeah. very good movie, intent, but it's kind of horrible. It, it's got some horror to it, but it was really intense. It, you know, it was about the seven deadly sins. They, you know what I think it is? I think the Catholic Church picked out seven sins, and I think that's, they're the ones that matched it. Sloth was one of them, too, but they did pull out of the book somewhere. But, yeah, it starts talking about being the, the ant. Like Paul says, you watch, you watch creation and what they do. That This actually, at the beginning, go to the sixth and... Um, uh, Okay, we'll start at 4, and I'll read a, uh, a bit of this. Same chapter? The same chapter, but a little bit earlier, verse 4. Oh, okay. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. Deliver thyself like a roe from the hand of the hunter, and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Oh, I thought there was more in there. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. But are you catching that? They're calling somebody a sluggard. And Paul is right. There's, there's something about be not slothful. And I pulled that out. You know what a I, sloth is? You know what a sloth is, right? Uh, yeah. It's like a slow <laughs> animal. And I bet you learned that from Ice Age. <laughs> did you? Yep. <laughs> so did I. That, that's what I call my computer, a sloth. <laughs> I, I knew what it was from then. That was uh to like a lazy person? Very slow, very lazy. <laughs> it don't want to move. Don't be slothful on this thing either. Be diligent. 
Yeah, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the aunt would be like busy. Oh yes, oh yes. The, okay, now do you remember on the sixth day how um, Israel had to gather up the manna because they were going to rest on the seventh day? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they had to do extra gathering or extra work supposedly to prepare for the next day. So the ant, what he does is he stores up food. He prepares for the next day. He's, they're mm -hmm. actually talking as if that's a good trait. Now, that's the, the um, we learn all that we can learn. And that's, a, if you go to Hebrews uh, 4, 11. <laughs> but if you go to, now, see, we're talking about don't be slothful. If you look up slothful in here, can you look up slothful? No, that? no um, Mike's going to look at that up. But are you at Hebrews 4.11? Yes. Okay. You want to read it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll read it then. Birds are accurate. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. See, now, like Paul was saying about, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, will say, He that diligently seeks him. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See, and he's saying labor. That's work. To enter into the rest, and that's what he's manifesting on that sixth day. You labor longer to enter into the rest, preparing for the next day, and that's what we're we're trying to do. The more um, he says, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. See, that's what your labor is: is to learn all that you can learn. And right, we're doing right now is tilling the soil. Mm -hmm. Just like a farmer does, is till their soil, plant their seed. And water it. And water it. That's all you got to do. And, and that is the process of what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. This one that says, be not so. Okay, Hebrews 6, 12. So we're real close to that other slothfulness. <laughs> okay, um, this is Hebrews 6.12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, so that there is some labor going on here, but people are looking at it as like physical labor or whatever, but it's, well, it is and it isn't. I mean, when we're stuck in the flesh, that's how we learn. Mm -hmm. You know, what, through whether it's, it's preaching, like these... Monday nights, or uh, once you get that little, like I said, we start at you off, and then you start looking at your plants, you start looking at your, your um, ground and everything, and you, you end up keeping your mind more on that. Okay, go. Okay. <clears throat> Let's keep on going with this thing, because sooner or later I'm going to hit on something that you guys are going to go, wow, i got to look that up more. Because you not only can get on to the book, which is fascinating, but you can get on to nature, which is just as fascinating, and it backs up the book. Yeah, see, I mean, that, that's one reason that it's great with Paul. Paul has no interest in finding the scriptures, but he could, pull, just any, do that. He could pull anything out of the creation. You know, different people, different strokes yeah. for different folks. Yeah, yeah. So we do have a tendency to compliment each so other. So now, we get into... What we streetwise call booze. Now you can get in, into a liquor store right there, and then they'll say, "Okay, we sell spirits." I don't think they're the good spirits, <laughs> because you start drinking the spirits, and the next thing you know, and you're all like this, and you're seeing a little bit double, and 
You're not exactly talking right. You're not exactly walking right. And the spirit of iniquity is the same way. Well, once you get the, the straight truth, like, um, you know, we're getting into school, everything else is, uh, I can't even talk straight. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. And all of a sudden, see, if, if, if you take your eyes, okay, and if you go, you know, you know how the Christians are, like, you know, with, um, you know, with the cross, you know, I got to wear the cross here and the cross there and a whole bit. Do you ever try going cross-sided? Yeah. What? You ever try going cross-sided? Yeah, you get double vision. You get double vision. You're not seeing right. <laughs> you don't see right. When you try to go cross-eyed, you basically see two of them. Okay. And it ain't normal. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So stop looking at the dog on cross and stop looking at the healing power <laughs> of the resurrection. Because the cross ain't doing you any good now, right now, because you're carrying around a cross right now, which is... Your spinal cord and your clavicles, which is your um, shoulder blades. You take a look at that, and you got a cross there, and your flesh is on that cross. Yeah, your physical body manifests that. Yeah. And so, then, oh boy, I, I don't believe that he went on the cross. You better believe it because you're a witness to it. Okay, um, do you know where the scripture is um, where it says, upon this Something about the, um, the cross is passed. I know what you mean, but I can't think of it. <laughs> the law and the prophets hang on it. Hang, or hinged on it. Hinged on it, yeah. There's something about the law and the prophets being hinged uh, on the cross. Is it Colossians somewhere or whatever? Does that one sound familiar to you, Tim? Because I know the New Testament you've heard a lot of. Oh, that one doesn't sound familiar. It's Matthew 22, 40. Oh, that, that's, that's which are two of the greatest commandments. Uh, well, they, they actually read that. Maybe, it, maybe it'll lead into it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna... Because that is the actually what we're talking about. You just picked out everything that sums up what we're talking about right there. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That, so I might have been getting mixed up with that. Okay, go ahead. You can read it. Okay. Let me find it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll read. I think this is the one kind of that, um, see, but I like getting the exact words. Cause, but blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay, uh, you know... This says it, but it might be a little bit hard. Now, you know, the law and the prophets are, are witnesses. So when he's saying nailing them to the cross, they're still also the keys to the kingdom that he gave Peter. <laughs> but believe it or not. And, and what I was trying to make a point is that cross that's in your body, clavicle comes from a word meaning keys. Right. So you've got the two keys hanging on the cross. Right. So, you know, I mean, there was more to it than that. So I, that, that might get you a little bit mixed up. But, yeah, that's what I was talking about. But also, hang all the law and the prophets. Go, go for that. What is it, 22-22 in Matthew or 11-22? Uh, Matthew 22-40. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, that's where you got to go in because love is the fulfillment of the law. That's, that's the same Please, type of stop. thing. You, you fulfilled the law when you could love your neighbor as yourself and um, love Yahweh. Because you pass from death unto life if you love the brethren. And that's why you got to be able to discern those spirits too. Because you can't love deception. You can't, you know, I'm... You, you, you can't love mischief, you can't love, you know, that the characters are nature. You, you should start hating the same things Yahweh hates. Mm -hmm. 
And then that, that's when you start seeing him in you, that's, that's where you start saying, help. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one that could help you, because you really can't. How long can you tread water? <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to back this up, that it, it's not untypical, because this is Paul the convert, and this is at a point in time where he started realizing he wanted to be good. And... Um, and he kept trying, he goes, that which I would do, I do not. And he went through all kinds of, uh, uh -huh. saying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And this is the end, that he, he conclusion he comes up with. And this is 725 in Romans. I thank Elohim through Yahshua Messiah, our Savior. So then with the, oops, I got to read the one above it, 24. <laughs> O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of this death? See, so he came to that conclusion. That's why I'm saying, whatever you ask according to the purpose, and that's what he's, he's helping. He's a father who's trying to help you grow, learn, and become, what can I say, a better man. You know, yeah. that's what every father desires for his son. And, you know, as long as you're humble... Saying I'm sorry, recognizing it, he will help you with it. But if you are holding on to vanity and you don't want to let go of them things, you're going to take a little bit longer and get hit and, a couple you, more two-by-fours. <laughs> you've got different degrees of satanic spirits, too. To prove that one out, you go in the, you know, the, the liquor stores sell the spirits. But, oh, wait a minute now. i got 180 uh, proof whiskey. Oh, yeah. I got a 120 proof wine, you know, stuff like that. So it's different degrees of different strengths of these satanic spirits. That's why you don't have hardened criminals all over the place. Because the hardened criminals are the 180 proof, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the ones that just, you know, beat up an old lady for his money, you know, they're, they're like the 80 proof, you know, <laughs> whiskey. So you got different degrees of different strengths of these satanic spirits too. No, if they beat up an old lady, that's a hundred proof. If they beat up an old man, we'll make them 80 proof. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Then, now, let's go on to another topic. Okay? We're just going to touch on these little topics. We're just going to touch on these little different topics. Here. Just to give you an idea of what is going on in the creation. You got what they call a hurricane. Do you know what, it, do you remember how we told you to look up the etymologies and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay, because he puts key points in a lot of these oh, things. Oh, yes, he does. Okay. So go ahead. Okay. Um, do, you get, do you have the definition of it? The, well, I, we could probably get a, she could look the definition. I, you know, that dictionary is too small print for me. What do you mean? Uh, okay. Just look up hurricane. Yeah. Do you got etymologies in that dictionary? Uh, no, but I can look it up on my tablet right now, too. Okay, because we're looking for a particular thing. Uh, and I'll look up the etymology of hurricane? Yep. Yeah. He's looking up the definition, and I'll look up the But yeah, when he first gave them the law, he was basically just trying to show them that they were bad. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, because I, I think it's the 8th chapter of Deuteronomy, he said it was to humble them and to see if they would obey his commandments and stuff. It wasn't actually to show them how... Um, Great they were. Oh, I keep more of the commandments than you do. It wasn't for that. It was to humble thee and to see what was in their heart. But it was actually to show them. Because I think in the seventh chapter of Romans, it starts talking about how the law made sin exceedingly sinful. Because now they knew. But he was just showing them what the nature, and basically that's what we all need, because we need to recognize we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. And see, people keep on thinking they can do it on their own, but you really can't. You, you, you need help. 